This was earlier, before the hunger strike. I'd already started studying about Islam. My family had properties in Australia, but they owed a lot of money to the bank. And you know the banks, they want to be paid no matter what is the condition of anything. They, they must have their riba. So my family was struggling under, under, under the, the, the yoke of paying this riba, and I said to them, why are we doing this? And I was, I was complaining to a friend. I said, there must be a system in this world that can operate without interest. He said, oh, there is. In Islam, there's no interest. It's haram. I said, excuse me? How can a system run without interest? How can, how can business possibly function if you don't have interest? He said, find out. He didn't tell me, he said, find out. So I started to research Islamic finance. And I found a system that just amazed me. It was absolutely perfect in its design, but the, the beauty of it was, then is in Islamic finance, it as if, it is as if a design fault is built into the system, and, and this is it. If the people in the system have sincerity, the Islamic financial system cannot fail. But if the people in the system, the Islamic financial system, do not have sincerity, it is designed to not be successful. Meaning that sincerity is the basis of everything in Islam. And as soon as I realized that, I thought, Allah Akbar, if one part of this religion is like this, is so uniformed and so complete, then Alhamdulillah, what must the rest of this religion be like? Money in Islam is nothing but a tool. It is not a thing to be possessed in itself. It is a thing that is expected and supposed to be put into to work for the benefit of the Muslims, for the benefit of the people, not just the Muslims, but all people. Money isn't a thing to be hoarded. It isn't a thing to be, you know, my bank account's bigger than yours. There's absolutely none of that in our religion. So for me, the Islamic financial system is based on trust, is based on sincerity, is, is not calculated upon interest, and even further than that, if money has been lent to someone, if they are in dire straits, forgive them. Make that, make that your sadaqah, make that, make that, give that, relieve them of that debt for the sake of Allah. Sub, subhana wa ta'ala. Subhana wa ta'ala. That is better for you. And I read this and I thought, this is beautiful. So, you know, money has been such a, so a source of torment and such a... Uh, uh, an area of turmoil in my own family, all since I was a small boy. I'm in here because I was greedy about money. Um, the, the, the crime that I committed was about money, not about drugs or anything like that. I wanted the money. So I understood that all of a sudden the importance of the whole concept of money became very small in the bigger picture. And that was a great benefit. And now, I don't think about money at all as, as such. But I do think about what can be done in business and in life after prison. I was astonished. I was astonished to hear not only is it a major sin, but the Rasul put it at such a magnitude that it was akin to having sex with members of your own family. Allahu Akbar, this is very serious. So if Reba is painted is that bad, then we must pay attention. We, we, must, we must pay attention for the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to put so much emphasis on this matter. Then so should we. But Reba is not just about money, even, even th there's an example of dates in the, in the Hadith. There was an example of dates. Dates were uh, inferior quality were traded for superior quality dates um, in the time of the Sahaba. And that was totally haram also. So it, it, it changes your entire thinking process about business and about the way you conduct yourself in business. And I think, inshallah, everything can be tablik. Everything can be dawah. The way you conduct your business, the way you, the way you conduct yourself in business can attract people to our religion, if done correctly. So that's what I think. <laughs> One of the things I liked was, was in the second shura of verse 275. They will tell you that Reba is like 
the, the trade is like Reba, but it's not because trade is halal and Reba is not. You know, Alhamdulillah. When we, when you, understanding that yes, you can function in this system. Yes, yes, there is a way to live. That and the sense of freedom have been the main things that are, that are, that have liberated me. And it is a sense of liberation that I'm talking about. It's a sense of being able to breathe, probably for the first time. I'm spending the rest of my life as an experiment. I'm uh, willing to put forward the rest of my life in the path to find out what can be achieved when simple people try only to do business within the framework of this religion and to help each other and to see what can be achieved. So that's what I want to do. That's the experiment I'm willing to focus on for the rest of my life. Success or not success, I can only make the intention. Only Allah decides what is successful and what is not. As I said, I, I originally started studying Islam because one man said, no, there is a system that doesn't have riba. It was a, an offhand comment. Eventually it led to me becoming a Muslim. Alhamdulillah. One offhand, what if he hadn't made that comment? I think about that sometimes. I'd be very sad if I, I'd be dead. <laughs> If I didn't find this religion, I wouldn't be here. I'm happy being here. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>